Hi, um, I'm Ross Gordon. I'm a research fellow at the University of Wollongong here in Australia. Um, I'm originally from Scotland, Glasgow in Scotland in the UK, and moved out to Australia um, about six, six, eight months ago. Um, I've, been, I've been very interested to follow the Occupy Wall Street movement over the last few weeks, um, and I think it's sort of a, a, a sort of combination of things that have been going on for us quite some time. Um, certainly in the UK you had the riots in London where that was driven by a lot of disenchantment with the political system and the economic problems that are happening throughout the world. Uh, and also the student protests that happened uh, around the UK last year as well. Where you've got politicians in the, in the mainstream political parties who claim to represent most people but actually only represent themselves. Um, and young people and, and, and progress, people who are interested in progressive politics have sort of been disenfranchised. Um, so I, what I'm hopeful of with the Occupy Wall Street movement is that now that they're sort of working towards an agenda and stating goals and objectives, that there can be a realisation of how do we uh, sort of uh, offer people political representation at the ballot box for progressive politics and progressive ideals. Because I don't think the party systems that we have in much of the Western democracies such as Australia, the USA and the UK really offer us uh, any 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 sort of outlet for our views. Um, really, there are two party systems where each each party is a mirror image of the, of the other, and they coalesce around this sort of centre ground of middle-aged, uh, middle-class people, uh, and don't really represent anything else. But the funny thing is, even that, that group that they claim to represent are, are disenfranchised with the current political and economic system. So I, I'm heartened to see that Occupy Wall Street sort of moving towards an agenda, but it's whether there can now be some leadership and actually people that are willing to go, well, I'll stand for election, because then you can actually get some power and then affect some of the changes that we want to see happening. I know that Occupy Sydney is sort of a little bit earlier in its term of gestation, um, but I'm hopeful that it, things can start moving in a similar way. Uh, and, and part of the, the reason that the, the, the meetings every night at 6 are happening is to try and come up with you know, stated goals and objectives and work towards an agenda. I think a key thing with that will be you know, how do all the dis disparate groups that have come together uh, to form this sort of Occupy Sydney and Occupy Wall Street movement come together under the one umbrella and then say, OK, well, look, although we might come at things from slightly different perspectives, we will we'll buy into these sort of progressive ideals about equality, about, about sustainability, about redistribution of wealth, about having a proper welfare system, universal health care, and actually being social animals, because that's what we are. That's supposedly what takes us above you know, the, the animals is that we have that social quality where we, we should care and look after each one, one another, but there's been too much individualism and mass consumerism and capitalism that in its current form really isn't making us happy and it's, it's leaving a lot of people sort of not only disenfranchised but having no stake in society. So I'm hopeful that, you know, the Occupy Sydney can go down that track and then actually become a political movement as well as a, a protest movement.